afternoon. It's a pleasure to be here to present on behalf of Lion Time. Let me just advance the slides. This is an important slide, so you know uh, the basis on which this presentation is prepared. And let me start, many of you will know who Lion Time is, but for those who don't, we're, um, we're an emerging line, uh, lithium producer uh, with two flagship assets. Uh, one is Kathleen Valley, uh, and the other is Baldania. Uh, we have a market cap of around $6 billion, and we're part, part way through construction of Kathleen Valley, which we we'll hope to bring online with first production in mid-2024. Being located in Western Australia is a significant advantage, uh, particularly in today's market and particularly in lithium. Australia supply will qualify for both US IRA and EU Critical Minerals Act subsidies, which gives our customers access to subsidies and funding which they can't get with some competitors' product. And that puts them in a competitive advantage with their, with their uh, cars. The political stability of Western Australia also provides a supportive backdrop for the development of assets, with significant investment being made by Lion Town and its shareholders of just under 900 million Australian dollars. And we, we may take this for granted in Australia, but um, we can see from jurisdictions around the world this is not necessarily an easy thing. And uh, we're actually seeing it demonstrated to us that the political uncertainty in other jurisdictions only adds to the anxiety over supply. Amongst Australian lithium deposits, our Kathleen Valley mine is, is up there, among the best of them. Having a resource of this scale provides longevity and scalability, which are precisely the characteristics required to support downstream conversion. It also creates immense optionality into the future, which is essential in the commodities industry, and especially in the face of significant growth, as was outlined in the previous presentation, and the uncertainty that that brings. Let me give you a bit of an update on where we are with construction. Since the, last, uh, the first blast was fired at the tail end of January, which is only three months ago, the progress on site has been monumental. As you can see, we've moved a lot of material. So the picture of the open, one of the open pits there, Mount, Mount Man. And we are also stockpiling material, which we hope to sell as DSO in, in the future. And we're advancing commercial discussions on that. You can also see significant progress on associated infrastructure. Our SAG mill is now on site. We've got a picture there. And actually, some of our shareholders actually went down to the port of Fremantle and took pictures of it before we even knew it was in the country, which is quite impressive. <laughs> and we're pouring the concrete to support the installation. Our dragonfly accommodation village, as you can see here in the shape of a dragonfly, is, is pretty unique. And this was done with a very clear nod to the Joao people, whose country we operate on. And this is uh, part of their dream time story about the uh, Jones Creek, which actually uh, sits quite close to our, our uh, mine site. While pictures are good, I've actually tried to embed a video, so if this actually works, uh, we can hopefully get a little bit of a flyover of the mine site and the different pieces of work that's all going. to see, I mean, I'm not a mining guy per se, but uh, to see all of that development done in just three months is, uh, is quite impressive. 
the team is really pulling out all the stops to try and build this as fast as we possibly can to meet first production by the middle of next year. Our original mine plan had an expansion to around 700,000 tonnes of spodumene in 2029, which is equivalent to the 4 million tonnes of throughput that you see here on the slide. But we're exploring opportunities to try and advance that, to bring it forward, to capture some more of that nearer high, nearer term uh, high prices. This expansion could significantly increase our production in a market short of tonnes, as well as coming online at a time which complements our existing offtake agreements that we have with LG Energy Solutions, Tesla and Ford, who are taking the majority of the production from our, our first stage, which will be around uh, 500,000 tonnes or more. This expansion could also provide the initial feed to supply our first train of lithium refining. Any advance in mine expansion also provides an opportunity to accelerate the original plan to enter the downstream. As you can see from these charts, integration provides a smoother cash flow profile through the cycle as the profitability can often ebb and flow between miner and refiner, depending on the industry backdrop at the time. Integrated production remains profitable at either point in the commodity cycle. And we saw on the earlier chart from Bloomberg Intelligence, they were on the left of the cost curve. This is one of the underlying rationales behind integration in other industries such as bauxite and alumina. As a result of greater EBITDA stability, integrated producers often experience re-rating. You can see on the right-hand side here, the trading uh, integrated producers trade on higher multiples than producers in today's market, even at higher uh, spodumene prices. <laughs> Before I wrap up and go to questions, let me touch briefly on our Baldania asset, which is located in the heart of the South Kalgoorlie Lithium District. As you can see, there are a number of interesting lithium deposits in this district, which could provide logistics and infrastructure advantages over pursuing individual developments in isolation. And we are continuing our work here to improve on the definition of the resource, as well as continuing to explore in the Northwest area, working towards a mineral resource update later in the year. And with that, I'll move to Q&A. Any questions from the audience, please uh, raise your hand and I'll bring around the mic. Um, are you intending to like, um, develop plants in the Bandania? Because you are focusing on Kathleen Valley at this moment. Yep. So what we're doing at Bandania right now is continuing the drilling uh, so that we can see if there's more resource there. Because at the moment, it's 15 million tonnes of around 1%. Uh, we think there's more prospectivity and that there's an active drill program going on in the northwest area uh, to try and further define that resource. But absolutely, the plan is to, to come up with a development pathway for Baldania, uh, which may not be the same as Caffeine Valley, given the smaller resource, but that's absolutely something we're trying to do right now as a company. Um, with respect to the in terms of the flexibility that you've got to, to mine, is it set in the get mine plan, plan because of the volatility of the lithium price, and, or, or is it um, uh, that you can um, uh, meet the market with different grades from the different pits? I'm just wondering if you've got flexibility over the mine life over the next, uh, say, four or five years, where we saw some volatility in the first, uh, in the first presentation. Thank you. Okay, thanks. But I think. Kathleen Valley is probably a fairly unique deposit in the sense that we're actually mining it underground. So for the first three years, there's the two open pits that are under development that we showed there. Um, Kathleen's Corner is by far the biggest open pit, which will run and provide the majority of feed for the first three years. Mount Man is going to be like a giant box cut, is how it's described to me by the mining guys, um, which will then provide access to do lateral development underground. And Underground, it's, it, there, there are sm smaller areas of higher grade, on the, but, but overall, the Kathleen's Valley, what's beautiful about it is it's a big block. And so it's very efficient for us to mine underground without, yeah, without much uh, dilution. And so we provide a very sta stable um, feed for, for the concentrator. So 
there are optionalities around an ore body of that size and so there are opportunities to potentially expand as we've talked about and maybe even beyond the four million tons but uh, but yeah there's there's not necessarily a, a plan to target high high grade pockets uh, depending on pricing you mentioned uh, Tesla and Ford it's, uh, two clients at the moment uh, are there others in the Chinese investment? Yeah, uh, so it's Tesla, Ford, and, and LG Energy Solutions. So those are their three offtake partners. They account for, it used, we used to say 90% of offtake when we were at 500,000 tons, but we have actually expanded to 3 million tons. Uh, so we, we should have a bit more material available for spot sales and potentially to commit to, to, to downstream. Um, but we don't have any Chinese partners uh, at the moment and uh, we don't have any Chinese investment.